shocked. That's all I can describe the feeling as. Hanging. Just hanging there, still, lifeless, cold. It was that day I remembered his stories. <laughs> his many, many stories. I specifically remember one that he told me. He was in his living room, smoking a joint. Or a doobie, as he likes to call it, you know, as you do. High as a guy he was, bloodshot eyes and the giggles. Oh, this was hard to imagine. As <laughs> Denny's the hardest motherfucker I've ever laid eyes on. 17 stone and 6 foot 4. I was shitting myself when I first met him, to tell you the truth. Anyway, so it was halfway through this doobie when he heard a knock at the door. So naturally, he got up and answered it. And there at the door was three men. And one of them held a gun to Denny's head. Then he wasn't phased by this, so he swatted the guy in the face and pulled out a knuckle duster from the waistband of his pants, which he only ever used for self-defence, I'll have you know. And knocked the other two out. He turned around and locked the door. Now at this point in the story, I became much more scared than he, because now I knew what he was really like. But it reassured me, and says he wasn't usually like that. It was just at that time, in that environment, fight or flight mode came rushing through his body he said it was a feeling like no other and a feeling that he didn't want to particularly feel again the next night on the way home from work he worked as an accountant could you believe just about to get into his car when he got jumped bagged and beaten up by five men They took him to a dimly lit room and by the time that they removed the bag they were all wearing masks. They told Denny unless he wanted to be killed and he wanted his parents to be killed then he would have to confess to a crime that he didn't commit. But this just wasn't any old crime. The men said in order for the confession to seem legitimate then he must witness this crime. Now we didn't go into detail but I swear to God a tear nearly dripped from his eye when he was telling me this story. He went pasty white and a bit choked. Now I don't know what went on that night but I can guarantee it wasn't pretty. What I do know is that he, he said to me he can never set foot in a butcher shop ever again nor can he ever smell bleach without gagging. So after he'd witnessed this, he went down to the police station and confessed to a crime that he committed. After numerous court cases and many, many lies under oath, he got sentenced to two times life. 50 years in other words. And that's how I met him. We're cellmates. We're cellmates. You see, last week I found Denny hanging from the ceiling. Still, lifeless, cold. He had the words, I'm innocent, carved into his torso. Blood was dripping into a red pool of everything that Denny was. Blood, sweat and tears. I didn't even know he was feeling down or suicidal in any way. But I suppose that's the point, isn't it? How can you ever truly know what someone's feeling? It's a scary thought, that, isn't it? <laughs>